Hello guys, welcome to Monday Night Live. I think we're up to 86. Few minor problems getting it uh, going. Uh, it doesn't look like we're on, we're doing the Facebook thing for some reason. We love all this stuff. So we'll just see if we can get Facebook going. I won't be a second there. Uh, what's going on here? Let's have a look here and see why we're not out putting on Facebook. So let's start that live feed right now. So um, we should be live on Facebook now. Let me just uh, scroll over there. I've got all my screens in a mess trying to get it uh, uh, da -da -da. Right, so that's timed out. So I'm just going to go to Facebook and start that again, and we'll uh, we'll go go live now. Create. Right. Oh, so how's everyone going? It's a wonderful night to have everyone here. All the Facebook guys, if you've come over from uh, Facebook looking for us, um, I think it's. Uh, I think we should have it going now. So, big night tonight. Um, really, really big night tonight. And uh, we're going to be talking about mapping. We get to have a look at the ute. Um, I've got the ute happening. So, let's just... Yes, I'm live. So, I am live. So, sensational. It's not on the, on the page where it was supposed to be. So uh, that has mucked everyone up on Facebook. So let's delete that post and that people might get the message. So here we go. So it should be happening there now. So welcome guys. Um, I hope we've got a few over on Facebook as well. So Monday Night Live 86. Um, yes, we've got a few over there. We've got 50 odd there on Facebook. So we'll get the comments up. Um, we can uh, get rid of some of these screens here and I can get a little organized. So, mapping tonight, let's get on with it. Um, great prizes tonight. I've got USB sticks to give away. However, after tonight, you may not need them. So let's roll with this little show and see how we go. So, welcome. Here we are, finally organised. Um, well, organised to a degree. I still can't see the YouTube comments. Here we go. YouTube comments. Let's get them over here somewhere where I can see them. Hello all. Welcome to the show. So, sorry about the uh, massive delay um, in getting things organised. Um, one of those nights where I'm just a fraction hopeless. So... Um, so tonight, we're going to give away these couple of uh, USB sticks. Um, however, after tonight, I'm hoping you don't need them. Um, so we'll, we will still give away one for Facebook, one for, uh, one for the mighty YouTube. Um, so lots and lots of people here on YouTube. Nikki's here, Spiro, Dylan, Lee, Lord Friday, Mr. Stroke It. Adrian, then I'm Matty Han and Warren and David. I've attracted a, a crowd of superstars on the Facebook. So that's absolutely fantastic. So what we might do tonight is the idea of tonight is to help you find more gold. Simple as that. Um, and with, with some respects to this, will help you find more relics as well. So don't be dismissing this and thinking this is a gold only show. A lot of the information I'm going to show you about historic mines and a lot of this mapping stuff that I'm going to show is equally valuable as a, from a relic point of view as well. So with regard to this is the old mines will normally have a township or a building or a, so there's a lot of value in it 
no matter what type of detecting you do. So, without further ado, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, we're going to start um, with a with the video I did this afternoon. Um, I actually did it this afternoon. I meant to do it out in the lease. Um, speaking of the lease, that's where the photo is from tonight. A early morning coffee sitting by the fire. But we're going to drop into daytime Ben from about four hours ago. We're going to have a look at exactly how I've set the ute up. Then we're going to go through. Um, then we're going to go through this mapping stuff in detail. Then I'm going to try and answer any questions you have. Righto. Without further ado, here's Ben from earlier. <laughs> Welcome guys, it's been a long time since I've given an update on the 1984 HJ47 Land Cruiser that I'm setting up as a prospecting truck. So this is a quick update on what's going on with the truck. Um, just to recap, because it's been a long time um, since I've spoken about it. As I said, HJ47, she's had a chassis extension, so 800 mil in the chassis. So she rides beautiful, and she's also got a 6.2 litre Chevy diesel in it. So the purpose of this video is to have a look at all the uh, communications and the navigation gear specifically set up for prospecting. So come with me, we'll jump in the truck and have a quick look at it. Okay guys, sitting behind the wheel of the old, uh, old cruiser, um, as you can see, I'll just have a bit of a pan around here, as you can see, she's pretty well stock standard inside, um, nothing's much changed, there's still got the old bench seats with all my stuff on it sort of thing, so um, pretty much stock standard inside. So what I've done is we've recently put a parcel shelf, I've recently put this parcel shelf up, something I built myself. Um, up in the top here, okay? So as plenty of you know, I run two phones, so obviously I've got two phone holders up at the top here. Now one is, of course, the daylight helpline, so um, it's handy when I have to, uh, when I'm away out of service, I can hand this phone off to one of the guys in the shop. So as we just go across the top here, in here um, is I've got a headlamp here on charge. Um, it's just a little USB headlamp right there. So that's all on charge sitting in there. The two phones sit on charge, of course the radio. Um, this is only a 40 channel radio, but it's a quite an old radio, but a very, very good radio, really, really clear. It's better than the modern one I've got in my, in the, in the, in the other, in the Triton. So it's a much better, I find it a much better radio than that. So um, next across is the, uh, is the I iPad, but what we're going to do is we're going to get back to that, um, back to that in a minute. So again, across the top here, stuff I don't use as much, I've got the satellite phone, I've got a big torch, which also acts as a spotlight, um, which sits on charge there. All this stuff sits on charge, ready to use. And then up here, I have got two little, and these aren't on charge at the moment, two little handheld UH, uh, UHFs that I need to build a little clip for so they clip into the top of that rack there. Um, clip into that rack there and uh, stay there so they're readily accessible. But again, all USB charged, ready to go sort of thing. So let's switch over to this iPad that is probably the key to the whole thing. Um, right here. Okay guys, here's the iPad, ready to rock and roll. So this is an iPhone 6. I think uh, for one feature that I needed for it to happen, um, you needed to go on iPhone 6 and I'll show you that feature in a minute. Now, I understand there's a lot of reflection on this. In a uh, video coming up very, very shortly, I'm gonna show you the, the actual detail on this screen without, uh, without the reflection I'm gonna recorded on a uh, computer so 
without further ado, here's the iPad. We've got to press at home to open it. These are the two apps I run, Australian Travel Geogra Geo Maps and uh, Gaia, G-A-I-A -A GPS, okay? Now, I have this set up um, purely as navigation. So, even out in the bush without any reception, this has got no reception. You can see at the top there, no reception, um, or whatever side it shows up on. There's no reception either way. Um, this has got no reception to it. So these are downloaded on the Wi-Fi before I go out. So when I open this map, and this is why I have an iPhone 6, uh, iPad 6, is because this is the feature I can use, the split screen feature. So I can have the two apps running the same time and split the screen however I want it. So very, very clever when you want to focus on one but still keep an eye on the other. Now, let's just start off with uh, uh, travel maps. Now the travel maps will talk to you when you change, um, when you change uh, geological zones. So we'll start off with just the standard uh, internet map. So you can choose all these map sources. So um, you can go satellite imagery. Um, it'll just take a moment to load. Um, and we won't not wait for it, but you can actually put on all the geology detail. So that's the geology detail um, for Queensland. Now, the beauty of this is you can see when you're going into different areas. So as you trail through an area, I tend to focus on Warwick, but this is very, very similar across all the, all the, uh, all the states. Um, so it's got all of this detail on it. Um, fault lines you can see the fault lines the major fault lines running through it you can, and and all of this is scrolling live while i'm traveling through the bush so this is the sort of detail you need to go to um, to be able to see what's going on the other the other thing we can do here is if we just uh turn off that uh let's see if the satellite will load now maybe it won't let's just have a look at maps here so here's just a standard Google Maps or Apple Maps or whatever you want to call it, okay? So what you can actually do is then, um, this button here is GIS features, okay? So as you can see there, um, if we were just to look at Queensland, it, it breaks down all the different um, materials you can go looking for, okay? So if we were just to go Queensland uh, gemstones, uh, let's just say Queensland gemstones. Now, all these red dots, right, are gemstone locations, okay? So they're live scrolling while you go through, while you go through them, while you're driving along the side of the road. If you're interested, for instance, in copper and nickel, right, you can switch across. These are the copper and nickel occurrences, okay? So any of these things you can switch across to. Okay, the other feature it's got, certainly for Queensland, is mining leases. So if you want to make sure you're not, um, that you're on the right uh, area, it loads all the mining leases. So if we were to scroll into, here's a big one, uh, I would suspect that's coal. What you can then click on and do, if we click on that, multiple GIS features, Grammar uh, Mining, New Ackland Coal. So that's a New Ackland Coal mine. So, um, yes, so that's the sort of features you can pull up with this. The other thing is, I, I often have people, if we were to scroll down to uh, the thriving metropolis of Warwick, here's my lease out at Warwick, right there. So, a tiny little lease, I know, but uh, it's not all about size, okay? So, the other thing you can do is mining lease access here so if we were to plot that data set it shows you exactly the access track to get into that mining lease okay so huge advantage there um, so shows exploration it shows loads and loads of information okay um, now that's that's fine now you can if we were to go to the download section okay as I don't have a uh, internet connection I don't have the list, but you can download this information uh, for 
for every state, okay? Um, so if you're interested in an area, every state. Um, it, in WA it does the tenement system. You can see it only loads Queensland, so we um, New South Wales gets the bum steer there, but um, on these maps, so it, it loads the whole state of tenement system sort of thing. So we've got we've got mining claim access roads here. You can see there's a big access road there, quite a long one, up up in the north Queensland. So that's basically the um, that's basically this map. Okay, the big problem I have with with it is we won't plat any uh, we won't plat anything. We'll just go back to Apple Maps for a minute. So the big problem with it is that if I wanted to add a waypoint, and I add a waypoint, mark a location, uh, actually what we'll do is we'll go down a bit further here where we've got, I've actually got a waypoint loaded here. So, and I'll put the satellite map up. I'm sure the satellite map works. Here I've downloaded this section, I think. Maybe I haven't, maybe it's uh, the new update. But the, the waypoints you put in on this machine, on this app, are too broad. That's about a 20 meter square, right? Which is absolutely no good for gold prospecting. It's a big area. So, so useless for that. Satellite map is not f f as detailed as some satellite maps, okay? So that's why I use Gaia GPS. They do, and if we just scroll over to that uh, app now, um, the beauty of Gaia is, if you were to put a waypoint in, if we were to put a waypoint in, add a waypoint right there, let's save that. Okay, we'll save it there. I'll delete it later. You can get, you actually get proper actual waypoint detail. Whereas on the geo travel maps, right, you get the satellite uh, variation. So it's too big a thing. The other thing you can do with Gaia is you can add map overlays. So this is, just, again, this is the lease here. Um, so you can, you can add stuff to the lease. Um, and it gives you a pretty good topo. This topo map is actually a very, very good overlay over, top, over the top of the satellite map. You see the red lines there? Very, very good. Let me find an area that's a bit more uh, uh, hilly. Let's see here, up in here, I should have some downloaded that is a bit more detail. Maybe I haven't got it loaded. Yeah, so I've only got very specific things loaded in, in this in this sat, sat nav um, in this thing because you've got to download the maps to this um, to this iPad so before you go out. So basically, that's the mapping system I use, um, and that's also the communication system I use when I'm out in the bush. We've got the satellite map. The only thing I haven't got in here at the moment and I'm going to add to it is a personal loca locator beacon. It's probably a little bit of overkill with the sat phone, but um, I don't think there's too much overkill you can do with your safety when you're going into really remote areas. So if you've got any questions, uh, sing out in the comments below. Um, I'll try and get through as many comments as I possibly can, but um, yeah, um, that's, that's how I work it. So thanks for spending 10 minutes with me having a look at the truck, and um, there'll be further updates of the truck coming um, down the track. Okay guys, thanks very much. Okay, so there we go. Right, lots of questions about what the app is, uh, all that sort of stuff. We're going to get into that detail. I have I have put the links in the comments, but I will put them more prominently in the comments. I had Facebook set up and it was it was set up wrong. Okay, so every everyone knows me little mate Chili, um, who I've got recently. Well, when Chili arrived, someone Lynn Lynn Dutch. I haven't seen Lynn here, um, but Lynn Dutch reminded me about a book I'd once saw. 
how to train your dog to find gold. So that dog there and this book are gonna come good friends. So I don't know how much faith's in it. I only got it this afternoon. I thought it was a bit of a joke, but it reads all right. It's about, I think it's 20 pages long. It's the smallest book on the planet. So we're gonna have a crack, Chili and I, and let you know if you can train your dog to find gold. So we're gonna have a crack at that, so at some stage. Right, so let's get on. Let's get on with this business. We'll crack on here um, and we'll, we'll see what we can do. Right, so here is my iPad, right? This is the one out of the truck. And it operates, it, it's just a, this is just a mirror, mirror setup of it. So what we'll actually do is we'll go away from this split screen, if I can remember how to do that. I think I can just do that. And we'll just look at these, uh, <clears throat> we'll look at these one at a time. So this is the geo map. This is Australian travel geology maps. It's from Trilobite Solutions, right? So, um, so what you can do with this is it has a range of maps that you can overlay over the top of it sort of thing. So um, Apple Maps, which is just the standard, you know, Google Map, um, and with, with some detail as well. Like you can scroll right in and it gives you all the, you know, it, gives you, it doesn't give you all the tracks or, or that sort of things, but it gives you the townships and all that sort of jazz. So, but then you can put the satellite imagery over it all. Simple as that. So you can be scrolling through. The satellite isn't too bad on there. Um, but when you've got a lot loaded on there, it makes it very, very, very difficult sort of thing. So um, then when you can actually look at, um, you, you can just load up your Queensland geology. Okay, now from a state point of view, I noticed some questions about whether this works in the places like Tassie and those sort of places. Um, so it does, and you, you, you look at that here. So this is all your, um, <coughs> all your different options. Now to get this app, it's about 12 bucks. Now with that, you can get all the geology, however, uh, the ones in blue, like New South Wales Gold, that's a subscription. So a subs a, a, an extra subscription per year. And I think it's an extra 12 bucks. The only one that I think varies with that is WA. So you can see I've got all of Queensland loaded there. I've got none of South Australia loaded. There's Tasmania. Someone was asking about Tasmania there. Um, so, you know, these are, you know, geology all the way through resources, and then the GIS di data I'll get to in a minute. So all of that stuff's all there. WA, I want to highlight WA because it includes the current tenements, all the blocks, gold deposit, drill holes. It, it, it is really quite thorough in WA. It's probably the most thorough state. So if you're in WA, you're traveling to WA, for me, this is where I would do my research before um, before I go over. Now, people are also asking about satellite map in the bush, right? So what you can actually do is on this satellite map, this satellite map doesn't work very well in the bush at all, okay? So the satellite map is not much good. It's good with the internet, so you can get the internet there. When we go to Gaia though, and I won't, I'll, I'll finish up the other one first, you can actually download sections of this satellite map. So you've got the satellite map live. So you can have a live satellite map running dual screen with your geology so you know exactly where you are and you can have it scrolling with you live in the bush. So for me, that's the most important thing. I want a satellite map so I can see features. So if I scroll, scroll, scroll in on a feature, I need a satellite map to say, right, when I get to this section of road or what's this, 
what's that section there? What's that grey section there? Is that a quartz blow? Is that is that something to look at? So I find it very important to have the sat nap, sat, satellite map live, okay? When uh, Spiro just asked, can you overlay old historic maps? You can put overlays on it, just like I have there for the lease. Um, so you can put overlays on it. However, I haven't tried doing any his old historic maps. So, um, so, but you can't do that with the geology map. So I, this is my problem. I need two systems to get what I need in the bush. Okay. Um, so let me just go back to the um, GIS layers. Now GIS are just plotting the, uh, they're just plotting the occurrences if you like. So all of this data is coming from the uh, government uh, website, the mines department website in your state. So that's the beauty of it. Um, is that um, it's 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 all ready to it's all ready to go. So it, it, and it and it's kept live for your it's kept up to date. So for instance, um, when I went in there today, when I was doing that video, um, it, it it didn't have all the details there, so I had to update it. So if I was to look at not that one. If I was just to go to Apple and I'd go to Queensland Gold, okay? So this this lists all the Queensland Gold occurrences, okay? And you can just click on one and it'll bring up Abandoned Mine and it will tell you all the details. So it tells you work extensions 10 metres by 50 metres, three infilled timber shafts, you know, um, all the details that you need to know. Most of them have got uh, sizes, half a ton um, of material. Um, so there's a lot of data there that is absolutely fantastic. So we can click on, if we see something of interest like that, we should be able to click on that. Doesn't want to click on for some reason. Mining, look, maybe I needed to zoom in a little bit more. I think it's still loading. See the blue line at the bottom? That's a that's a loading thing. So, um, so very very powerful. As I said before, if I plot the mining leases in here, we'll go to one that I know of pretty well. Um, there's the there's the lease. We can put a satellite map over that. We can look at the lease. We can also go in there and put the access track that I was showing there before. So lease access and uh, there it's put the access track in. Happy day. So if you're looking for something, um, if you're looking for something, that's, uh, I find that absolutely fantastic. Now, it seems like I'm out of sync on YouTube and that's why we got a lot of people on the Facebook um, so um, yeah if you're having trouble with the YouTube apparently the Facebook um, is working well so who knows why that is it's just how it is so um, yes so as a bit of a, an aside let me throw something up here Blakey came out to the lease. Blake from Blue Dog Prospecting, and I've got to have a shout out too while we've paused. The CQ Detectress. I'm sure the CQ Detectress are in the house. C CQ Detectress mug tonight, so thanks very much for that, boys. But while we're talking about uh, this stuff, is um, Blake from Blue Dog Prospecting, I think. Um, I think uh, he should be renamed, not Blue Dog, but Kangaroo. He bought a kangaroo out, um, a little orphaned, uh, orphaned kangaroo. So, um, so, yeah, yeah. I found it a bit ironic, actually, the, the kangaroo situation out at the lease. Um, and I found it ironic because I actually... Uh, 
I actually, on the way out there, knocked over two or three of them on the way to the lease. I didn't go intentionally to knock over a few of them, but I knocked over a couple and Blake bought one out that he's looking after, so who knows? So, yes. Anyway, I found it a bit funny, so. Right, so back to the maps. Um, <clears throat> we're, we're about to go, uh, it's about to go to sleep on me, so. Right, we've got to turn it around there, so. Um, oh no, that doesn't work, does it? Something's gone wrong. It's gone awry. It's all gone awry. There's trouble. Look at that. Back to how it was. Okay. So. Um, so there's a fair few people here. Donnie, Kyle, Gavin. Uh, CQ Detectorists are always here. They're a great club. If you're in central Queensland, get on to these people. So, good job, guys. So... Oh, that kangaroo, Pete, Matt, Matty Hands talking about, don't I, he loved the little leg licker. My God, did that thing want to lick your legs. I don't know why it was, but just, it was all over you. It was all over you. You'd go to the loo. I, at one stage there, I went to the loo. I don't know why when I talk about mining leases, I've always got a toilet story, but anyway, I have. So this kangaroo, right, it, it, it could be quite silent. And so you'd go to the loo, you'd turn around to shut the door and the kangaroo would be trying to get in the toilet with you. It was, uh, yeah, um, yeah. So I don't know what, I don't know what possesses that kangaroo, but anyway, maybe it's the, maybe, the, maybe it's the bloke he's living with and maybe he's uh, teaching him bad habits. So, but anyway. Right, so where were we? I got all tangled up there with talking about uh, Blake and his kangaroo, so it worries me a bit. Um, so, now, let's go over now to uh, Gaia, right? Gaia, actually, I want to show you something that I didn't really clearly show you um, <clears throat> this afternoon. So here is a waypoint that's a waypoint put in to the geo maps. So the Australian geological travel maps, okay? So for a gold prospector, that's too much ground, okay? I know there's a satellite variation and I know the satellite's never accurate, but that is a waypoint that's as fine a detail as you can get with the, with the travel maps, okay? So there's 100 metres, so that is probably 30 metres square, okay? You can't see that because someone's moved this thing and it hasn't made it, made it right. Something's gone on here. The world's ended. It's a disaster. Let me just change the size of this thing because um, that's what the problem is, I think. Uh, oh, you can see it. Oh, good. I'm good. I'm glad we worked that out. So it's, although it's still the wrong size. So let me just fix it up so you can see the whole screen here. Um, that didn't fix it at all. I don't know how to, f oh here, this will fix it. This will get it. And then I'll bring it down. Look at that. There we go. So, sorry about that. I'll just make it a little bit smaller so you can see it. So that's a 30 meter square. No good for gold prospecting. When you look at the Gaia and you put a waypoint in, right, it's accurate or as accurate as GPS can be. So, um, <clears throat> so that's another advantage of this Gaia. Fantastic topo maps as well. So this topo map, when you go into your map layers on this, the map layers are basically American base. This is an American based thing. There's lots and lots of stuff here for America, like there's geology in America and topos and that sort of thing. But um, this is the best, that, that top one is the best satellite topo map for Australia. Um, so if we were to scroll into an area, let's just pick an area that's a little bit hilly. Let's find, let's, we're bored of looking at Warwick. Let's look, let's look, uh, Let's look Gympie Town. So 
when we start looking at the topos of some of these, uh, you can get some awesome detail um, on s some of these places from a, to topo a topographical point of view. So a topographical satellite view is sensa it is sensational, the level of detail. I haven't spotted an app or a topo satellite map that is as good as this. This is, I think, is f phenomenal to be able to see that level of detail and to see areas, particularly if you're looking for, um, particularly if you're looking for gullies and that sort of thing, this level of detail is sensational. So that's one big advantage of it. Um, the other big advantage of it is the, of course, the waypoints that I just mentioned. Um, but you can actually put those layers over it, so you can overlay the layers like those those layers I've put there. Now, the advantage of tonight's prize, okay, is if you just want to run one of these apps, okay, you'd run this Gaia, right, for gold prospecting, and you'd put that USB stick, you'd put those waypoints on this app, and it would give you some of the information you need. So, um, so the level of detail is excellent. Now, what is the point of all this information? Okay, the point of all this information is when you look at a geology map. Okay, if we look at a geology map, it lays out all the fault lines. See the fault lines. The fault lines are in the blue, right? I look. I like to look for joins in the in the fault lines. Um, I like to I like to look at specific geographical areas where you know there's a number of fault lines joining here. A lot of the lot of country change here. You've got faults running through. Let me just see if I can bring it over right above my head there. That area directly above there. Um, <coughs> is an interesting area um, and worthwhile looking at. Now, <coughs> let me shock you with how fault lines are put on a geological map, okay? Not many people know this. Um, not many people know this, but fault lines on a geo map are put in by a bloke sitting behind a desk going, that looks like a fault line, okay? So, <coughs> And I believe the figure is only about 30% of them are ground proven, okay? Now, you can, you can actually um, report fault lines that you've found that aren't on the geo maps to the people who look after the geo maps and they will add that fault line. But you've got to bear in mind that just because, if you look, if you look at that lease, and let me turn off all of this stuff let me turn, I don't know how many layers I've got on here, I've got it on everywhere. But if, if you look at my lease, right, there's not a fault line running through it, okay? Now, I've discovered six minor faults in that, in that lease, okay? So why aren't they there? One's probably a major fault line. Um, they aren't there because no one's walked the ground and proven it. So they've just put them in They've just put them in based on what it looks like on a computer and what it looks like on a, uh, on a, you know, all the raster maps that they do from satellite. So, so that's how fault lines are put in. So when you look at these fault lines and you look at a stack of fault lines, yeah, some of them have been ground proven, but some of them haven't been. They've just been done with a satellite looking at it. So, yeah. Right, so, questions. Um, 250 shooter, the GPS locations of the rack coins, they are not on the GPS. I hate to tell you this, but they're not on the GPS. So, um, so no, you're on your own with rack coins. Fantastic thing that Andrew's doing up there. Um, I hope everyone's um, getting amongst it because, um, yeah, because it is a great thing that Andrew's doing. So, guys, I don't know how many waypoints are on that. I haven't looked. 
I asked Nat the other day and she said between 47,000 and 48,000. So there's a stack of waypoints there. They're divided into states, so you can put them, you can load, like if you're only interested in Queensland, you can just load Queensland. Because 40,000 waypoints will confuse Google Earth and your computer. So you need to, um, <coughs> you need to know that you, you don't want to jam your computer full of it. I've done it a number of times. So, um, right. Uh, da, 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 da. Right. Okay. So, what else has been uh, marked here? Um, what? Uh, so, people are asking handheld GPSs. So, what I do, okay is I do, so I have both of those apps on my phone, right? And people that have been on the lease with me <coughs> will know that when I get, when I, when we get a target out there on the lease and I mark every lease so I've got a, 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 a idea of what's going on okay I will I will actually stand in the hull and I will mark the size of that like there's a few of them I will mark a so, the size of that uh, I don't know whether you can see that they're all turning black but they're actually yellow so I'll mark that so then when this phone and this iPad are connected together it'll sync all up so I use that this app on both my phones and they and the phone and the iPad and they all sync up so I have one correct layer. So um, so the costs of these, I think Gaia Gaia, I have to have a look at what Gaia is worth. Um, Gaia is, I think it is about. I think 25 bucks a year, something like that. Um, I should have, um, I should have looked that up beforehand. But I think it's about 25 bucks a year. Um, I think it's something like that. So um, I think it's 17 dollars American. Okay, so that's 17 dollars American for that Gaia map, um, the the tr uh, the Geo system is twelve bucks for the mapping system, and then twelve bucks per state. I think WA is slightly more because of the tenement system, but um, but yeah. So I actually use this phone a lot at, to mark locations, and then it all syncs together when you get home. So. Um, so that's how I use it. Um, yeah. Now there's lots of other apps. People might, <coughs> people might, um, people might uh, might prefer something else, and that's sweet. You know, that's no trouble at all. So um, yeah, easy done. So um, yeah, it's 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 you know. It's up to everyone to work out what works, what works for them. So, um, so yeah. So that's the that's the beauty of it. So, um, yeah. So, uh, da, 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 twenty-seven bucks. Someone said, uh, Brad. It's definitely not. Brad mentions here it's one hundred and twenty dollars. It's definitely not one hundred and twenty dollars, mate. Um, I didn't pay one hundred and twenty dollars for that, so uh, yeah, twenty seven ninety nine for for Ga Gaia. So um, also have a look at Backcountry. Adrian says here, look at Backcountry Navigator Pro. I'll have to have a look at that one. I haven't looked at that one. So right, guys, is there any other questions um, about the mapping systems? Um, because, uh, and you can just fire, I've missed, probably missed 10,000 comments in the, in the comment box. Um, 
but um, I'm sorry if I do, but I'll aim to get back to them um, as soon as I possibly can. So, we've looked at a kangaroo. I have got some other... <coughs> so, I should, uh, I should actually... Um, I should actually just give a bit of a recap on the lease as well. While we're screwing through, this photo behind me is from the lease the other day. I think I've mentioned that. But... <coughs> Big piece, like a lot of pieces coming out of the lease. Like um, Lynn got that one. Lynn and husband got that one. Um, like there is lots and lots of gold coming off that lease. Um, so much so it's not really profitable for me, but we'll discuss that in Christmas. Big piece come off, 13.3 13, 13 grams. Um, a really, really nice piece. That's uncleaned weight. It might, it'll go down a bit, of course. So that's it unclean on the scales. Um, nice specimen piece came out too. So um, that was actually about 10 minute, 10 meters from that, from, uh, from that campfire. It was amazing. Detecting at night, boys thought they'd try across the road from the campsite, bang, specimen. So really, really happy to see that specimen come out. Like just, there's just heaps. Like this is a this is a week, and I've probably missed half of them. I've probably duplicated some pictures here, so I think these these ones are duplicated here. But <coughs> it's just, uh, yeah, it's just everywhere. Oh, you gotta have a look at this. Someone got creative, so um, so yeah, so um. um so, uh, Aussie asks, is the plant running yet? No, the plant is well underway. Um, so I'm really, really um, excited about that. It's, um, yeah, the, there's a lot of work happening with the plant. I've really stitched Dustin up, to be honest with you. Um, so, it's it's sort of a bit my fault. I bought these big diesel, uh, two diesel engines, ones to run a pump and ones to run the trommel, and they're a bit oversized. So they're ten horsepower, um, they're ten horsepower diesel engines. So they've got a lot of torque. It had a five horsepower spinning it before, so I didn't. I thought a bit overkill would be wouldn't be too bad. So Dustin's had to redesign. He's had to put a clutch on the trommel. He's had to oversize cogs and all sorts of stuff. So I've sort of stitched him up a little bit with that. But it is going to be all singing, all dancing. So I'm really, really, um, I'm really, really excited to get that um, that that up and going. So um, yes. So Matthew, I've got an excavator. Matthew asked how long until I get the excavators out there. I've got an excavator out there. We open up a um, we open up a a section of ground for people, so you're always detecting fresh ground. Um, so yeah, um, yeah. So uh, Tony says, "What are you uh, What are you doing in the summer months?" Um, the summer months I'll be washing dirt um, or we're also going to have people out there but we're going to do a lot of night detecting we're going to switch to a bit more night detecting so um, um, so yeah it's yeah we'll, we'll we'll have we'll have night detecting we're not going to stop just because it's summer They're, all this rubbish about having seasons and gold prospecting no nah. so um, we just changed the way we work to cope with the heat. So um, that's what we're doing. So Dusty's just joined the thing. I was just talking about how I stitched you up, Dustin, with a oversized motor and a oversized pump. So, <coughs> yeah, so, um, uh, yes. So, yeah, so it'll be, um, it'll be uh, an excellent, excellent little, uh, little thing. So. Blake's got a stack of video he's done up actually of the lease. So I think he's going to post that on his channel, I think. So um, yeah, um, yeah. Uh, the next 
Blake just asked when the next week the lease is. I think it starts the 17th of November. So somewhere around there. But just have a look at the Golden Sperm Mining website. Um, yes. Oh, and I've forgotten. There's big news. And I've forgotten. There is huge news. So <coughs> let me just get this up here. Because I can't believe after all of this, I've forgotten to mention this. I think it's the I think I think it's going to be a sensational event, right? Is this? I forgot to mention it. It's the Carrara Nugget Hunt. It's on. It's happening. So the dates are the weekend after Easter. Okay. Uh, it's not Anzac Day, so there won't be an Anzac Day thing um, there. 17th to the 19th of April. The Queensland Gold Panning Championships there, where it's going to be affiliated with the Victorian Gold Panning Association, which is the Australian Championship, which then links into the World Championships. So that's happening out there. Um, it's going to be very, very cheaply priced. Not cheaply, but it's going to be reasonably priced. There'll be no sticker shock, one might say. So it'll be a uh, pretty good value event. Um, we're going to, tickets will be released this week, I hope. I've got, uh, I'm doing some work on tickets. So um, Donnie, Donnie's there organizing things. So um, I'm doing a bit of, uh, a bit of website stuff to organize this so that's going to be amazing so as soon as those tickets are available I'll let you know I, they will be I can guarantee you they'll be sub 50 bucks they'll be below 50 bucks um, and there'll be no there'll be no extra costs so you know we're talking about doing a lease tour we're talking about we'll do that uh, that tour around the around the gold fields like we were doing There'll be people there to give training. Um, so, and the whole thing will be sub 50 bucks for the weekend. That won't include accommodation. There's free accommodation at the Carrara, behind the Carrara pub where we, uh, where we do it, uh, where we did it last year. And there'll be, and then there'll be food vans there. It won't include food sort of thing. So it'll just be for the events. Um, there'll be kids panning. There'll be, Obviously, the panning championships, but um, our rat, Andrew Austin from Rat, is doing a whole stack of relic stuff. We've actually, I'm going to identify a few old house sites there. We might go and see if we can find the old pub um, that's supposed to be there. So I think that is an amazing, affordable event. It's the last weekend of the school holidays. You can come in on the Friday afternoon, go home on the Sunday afternoon. So, um, yeah, get amongst that, because it will be absolutely mental, that one. So I can't believe I forgot to mention it. I've been, it's all I've been doing for the, seems like all I've been doing for ages. So, um, <coughs> yes. So, it is, make sure you go to that. If you can get there, it will be a cracking, cracking weekend. So, right, guys, the time has come. I'm going to close off these uh, entries for this, uh, for the for the um, USB sticks. So, um, and I am going to go through the uh, the comments on these videos um, and answer any questions you've got about uh, about these mapping systems. But as always, don't forget to. Uh, don't forget, you can always contact me on Facebook, YouTube, phone numbers. Uh, I haven't got my phone number up there, and you probably can't see it because I've got a... Yeah, there you go. That, that's a bit better. Um, but yeah, contact us on Facebook. Send me a message, and I'll help you out with your mapping wherever I can possibly do that. Um, so we'll close that off now. So right now we'll close that off and we'll run the randomizer um, and 
so the Facebook winner tonight is uh, da, 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 Maureen Woodward. Maureen Woodward lives in Tambo, Queensland. Good town, Tambo. So um, yeah, so congratulations, Maureen. Um, and so I will contact Maureen straight after the show. On YouTube, you need to contact me because I can't. So contact me via Facebook um, or the phone or text or whatever you like. Um, I'm not sure why I'm so tiny. There you go, I'm bigger now. Um, so you need to contact me. So let me just run this uh, comment picker, the randomizer I should say. And it goes to Tomo3456. So congratulations Tomo3456. If you want a little USB stick in the shape of a gold bar with almost 48,000 old historic gold mine locations on it. Righto guys, well I know that was probably a little bit of a boring subject for some people who have got their map mapping all under control, but I think it's an important subject um, for everyone to look at. Um, don't forget all these all these clusters of gold mines on those maps normally have an old town with them. So people are, people were living there and for a relic point of view, there's a lot of goldfield relics out there that are ignored. There's a bag of stuff here that's come out of GPAs I haven't even looked at. Someone dropped in for me to look at. Um, <clears throat> you know, this is the, like there is so much of this gear out there. It's a buckle of some description. Like, that looks like a harmonica reed, but it's a funny shaped harmonica reed. Like here's a thimble. Like. All this relic guys, like there's so much gear out there and it it doesn't get hit like it does in, in the major towns. Like, you know, that's the top of a lamp. I've just worked it out. So is this one probably. So this, the old hurricane lamp, so we could go up through the, anyway. Um, <clears throat> but there's so many relics and you know, they are, remarkably untouched in the gold fields compared to the gold, you know. Well, right, guys, well, thanks for joining me. Next meet week will be another exciting show. Got no idea what it is yet, but all will become apparent in the next day or so.